In the past few weeks, Kit Guru has travelled to Los Angeles, where we were briefed for many hours on AMD's Zen 5 technology. While we were there, we took the opportunity to speak to fellow YouTubers Paul and Kyle, and also to the poets, and that was great. Sadly, we also had a breakfast, and that was less great. And then we came home expecting to review processors, but AMD delayed the new Ryzen 9000 processors due to an abundance of caution. But happily we now have the new Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs, with Ryzen 9 due to launch next week. And as a consequence, I've spent quite a while testing many CPUs. A total of five generations of AMD CPUs. And I've also been looking at Intel 14th Gen Raptor Lake. We're going to review the Ryzen 7 9700X in a separate video. This one's all about Ryzen 5 9600X. Before we look at the performance of the Ryzen 5 9600X, I'm going to talk very briefly about Zen 5 architecture, and the reason for that is on the face of it, AMD has simply shrunk the TSMC process of this processor from 5 nanometer to 4 nanometer. However, when you see the performance charts, you will think there's a lot more going on than that, and you'd be quite correct. So let's take a look at Zen 5. Zen 5 was announced at Computex this year, and it continues to use PCI Express Gen 5 with DDR5 memory. However, AMD is claiming a significant uplift for Zen 5 over Zen 4, in a range of applications 16% on average. If we take away the 35% outlier on the right hand end, you can see we're still above 10%, which is impressive for an apparent small die shrink. And when you look at the family of processors, Ryzen 9 9950X, 9900X, Ryzen 7 9700X, and Ryzen 5 9600X, you can see we've got the same core and thread configurations as Zen 4 Ryzen 7000. The speeds look very similar, however the power settings have clearly changed somewhat. The TDP of Ryzen 9 9900X in particular has dropped, but so too has Ryzen 7. AMD talks about efficiency leadership on the desktop, and then we can see the specs of the four processors listed on AMD's website. The Ryzen 7000 family is significantly larger. AMD has a history of releasing new products on the same socket, so we can expect more Ryzen 9000s in the near future. And if we look back at Ryzen 5000, you can see the family is now quite extensive. So what's going on inside Zen 5? They have a number of objectives, and you can see the reference to Zen 5 and Zen 5C, or compact cores. This was covered by Matt in a recent review of a Ryzen AI 300 laptop. And when we dig into the microarchitecture, there's lots going on. Loads of words promising great things, but we'll skip past that because we've got better stuff to get to. Optimize branch prediction and fetch. This is the sort of thing that's absolutely great if it works. However, when we hark back to older processors such as AMD Bulldozer, we remember promises are not always delivered. So, new decode advances. Will this turn out to be any good? And what about wider dispatch and execute? On the face of it, that has to be a winner. Similarly, increased data bandwidth. And when you look at increased floating point capability and better support for AVX 512, it's now full 512 rather than 2 times 256. And it's a similar story with new instructions for Zen 5. These look great. And when you take all those points together and you compare Zen 5 with Zen 4, it would appear that Zen 5 is going to be a clear winner. It smashes Zen 4 out of the park and Zen 4 was pretty blooming good. You need to remember that Zen 5 is an architecture. It's not just used on the desktop in Granite Ridge, it's also used in Strix Point laptops and Epic CPUs, and no doubt in other devices. It's an architecture that's going to be used in a whole number of different environments. But we're interested in Granite Ridge for the desktop, and this part, on the face of it, looks familiar. However, AMD says they deliver again, because Zen 4, Zen 3, Zen 2 and the original Zen have all been winners. This, it has to be said, sounds promising. But are we going to take AMD's word for it? No, we're not. We're going to test this processor. We're going to see how it performs. We're working with three platforms. The first to support Intel LGA 1700, 
This is a Core i5-14600K and we have this Z790 Aorus Master X, which clearly is overkill for a Core i5. The point is of course that in this series of reviews I'm going to be using Core i7 and Core i9 and I want to use the same motherboard. So this is a high-end Z790 for this Core i5. The Core i5 runs with DDR5 memory and I'm using the same memory on both AMD and Intel. It's G-Skill Trident Z Neo which supports XMP and also Expo. Another common part used across the three test platforms is the power supply, Seasonic Prime PX1600 ATX3. Clearly we don't need 1600 watts of power to run a Core i5 or a Ryzen 5, but as I say, it's also going to be used in other processor tests. I'm following the same way of thinking with my choice of CPU cooler, Fantex Glacier 1 360D30. So it's a 360mm cooler, it has three fans as you'd expect, they are D30s 30mm in thickness. This cooler is completely over the top for a Ryzen 5 or a Core i5 and entirely appropriate for a Ryzen 9 or Core i9. And you can argue that this Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC is overkill for a Ryzen 5 or Core i5, but believe you me, when you see it in action, you will be converted. The second test setup is this ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard, which is Socket AM4. The processor installed at the moment is a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is a Zen 2 part. I have also tested Zen Plus, which is a Ryzen 7 2700X. But the real prize here is this Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which is a Zen 3 part. In our briefings, AMD was comparing the brand new Zen 5 against the Zen 3 3D part. They made very little mention of Zen 4 3D. The implication was Zen 4 3D will beat the brand new parts, which makes us all the more keen to see the inevitable Zen 5 3D parts, perhaps in September. The memory used with the various Ryzen 5000 parts is this Corsair Vengeance LPX rated at DDR4 3600. For the Ryzen 7 2700X and 3700X, I had to slow the memory down to 3200 because those older processors don't support even 3600 megahertz memory. And then we come to the third and up-to-date platform, which is this MSI Meg X670E Ace. As with the Intel, so it is with the AMD. It's a very high-end board and it's complete overkill for a Ryzen 5, but I'm going to use it at Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9, and that's my explanation. Let's park this hardware and show you the Ryzen 5 in action. This is a familiar platform and we've seen this BIOS before. We enable Expo and then if we pop into Advanced and take a quick look around, we see familiar friends like Precision Boost Overdrive and all the typical obscure AMD settings tucked away under CBS and all the bits and pieces you expect to see in a modern BIOS. However, we can handle all these functions in Ryzen Master. And a quick look at Cinebench, just a rapid run rather than extended 10 minutes to see how the new processor behaves. 88 watts under load and nice and cool. Obviously it's only been running a few seconds but the temperature is absolutely icy cool. Ambient here 24 Celsius. And the consequence is the cooling is also able to run nice and quiet. I mentioned Ryzen Master and we see here the ability for one click over clocking. Also the new Curve Optimizer tool which is used to improve memory speed. We haven't yet had a chance to use this, just haven't had time. Let's take a look at overclocking. And here we see the CPU is absolutely transformed in Cinebench R23. It's drawing much more power, it's running hotter, and it's running significantly faster. What did we just see there? The nominal TDP of this processor is 65 watts, however under load it's drawing 88 watts. We can actually see this in AMD's figures, it's what they call socket power. So TDP is one thing, but the actual power that your processor will require under load is a completely different number. 
The other thing is when we apply auto overclocking, instead of drawing 88 watts, the processor now draws 124 watts. And in Cinebench R23, the clock speed rises from 5.0 GHz per core to 5.25 GHz per core. My feeling having worked with this CPU for a few days now is that what AMD has essentially done is to undervolt the CPU and to reduce the power draw so that Zen 5 compares to Zen 4 quite favorably, but at lower power. However, if you want to use about the same level of power as the original Zen 4 Ryzen 5, which was the 7600X, then you will get much more performance, about 20% extra. In my benchmarking, I've used the Ryzen 5 9600X in both configurations, out of the box with Expo enabled, and also using that overclocking feature that you just saw. So let's go through the charts and see how the Ryzen 5 9600 performs. AMD tells us they're comparing their new Ryzen 5 against the Core i5 14600K. So I'm choosing a bunch of CPUs for comparison that are priced up to about 300 or 310 pounds, including VAT here in the UK. I'm also including the entire family of Ryzen 5000 processors because they're all currently available on sale in the UK. And if you're running an AM4 platform, you might be considering a move to AM5. Let's start with Cinebench 2024 multi-core. Top of the chart, the Core i5-14600K. Then we have the 12-core Zen 3, followed by the 8-core Zen 4, and then we have the brand new Ryzen 5, with the overclock setting just ahead of the stock clock timings. In Geekbench 6, it's much the same. This benchmark seems to favor newer architecture, so the Zen 3 Ryzen 9 tumbles down the chart, Core i5 still at the top, Ryzen 5 9600X is doing well. Cinebench R23, top of the chart, it's pure grunt. The Ryzen 9 5950X followed by the Core i5 and a few places down we come across the new Ryzen 5. Let's look at how these processors are performing in terms of power consumption. The Ryzen 5 5600X operates on a mere 78 watts under load and as you saw, the Ryzen 5 9600X only requires 88 watts in stock form. Very little power. If we take the Cinebench R23 score and divide it by the number of watts consumed, top of the chart is the Ryzen 9 5950X. This is an amazingly efficient processor and it has stunned us for many years. Behind that, we have the brand new Ryzen 5 9600X. Clearly the new Zen 5 architecture is efficient. CPU temperature under full load with this Fantex Glacier 1 360D30 AIO. On auto, the Ryzen 5 9600X operates at a mere 65 degrees. This is at an ambient 25 Celsius. When we overclock, the temperature rises to 84. Cinebench R23 single core. I did not expect this. Top of the chart by a healthy margin, it's the brand new Ryzen 5 9600X. You will note the overclock figure apparently operating at 3.6 gigahertz. This is clearly nonsense the software just does not fully understand this processor. Blender 4.2, the classroom test. The fastest processor here, again thanks to pure grunt, is the Ryzen 9 5950X. Close behind that we have the Core i5. A few places down we have the Ryzen 5 9600X. And as you'd expect, the overclocked version is going faster than the auto version. In 7-zip it's the new version 24. The Ryzen 5 is in the middle of the chart. ADA 64 memory bandwidth, clearly this is all about the type of memory. We're using DDR5-6000 with the Ryzen 5 and it performs well. 3D Mark Time Spy, this is the overall score, so the graphics are playing a huge part here. RTX 4080, remember. The Ryzen 5 does perfectly okay, but it is just below the middle of the chart. And then we move on to gaming. Starting with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1440, we can see the Ryzen 5 at the top of the chart by a very small margin. It's the same story in Avatar at 1080p, top of the chart, but all the contenders at the top are very close together. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1440, Top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 5, but there's something odd going on. On auto, it's doing distinctly better than when overclocked. And in Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p, it's a similar story. The Ryzen 5 does very well, but it does better on auto than when overclocked. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p. Look down in third place and you'll see the Ryzen 5 7600X with the highest average frame rate of 146. 
that's a surprise. However, the 1% low is slightly lower than I'd like to see. So I've put it down in third place. Top of the chart is the Ryzen 5 9600X overclocked. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. Top of the chart is the Ryzen 7 Zen 4 part. That's the 7700X. Directly behind that, we have the Ryzen 5 auto ahead of overclocked by a tiny margin. And the fourth and final game is Total Warfare at 1440p. The Ryzen 5 does perfectly well. Overclocked, it does slightly better than auto. And Total Warfare at 1080p. Once again, the Ryzen 5 9600X does very nicely. I'm impressed by the new Ryzen 5. It did far better than I expected and used far less power while doing its work. Pros and cons, starting with the pros, the good points. New Zen 5 architecture delivers great performance at low power settings. The Ryzen 5 9600X is cheaper than we expected. It's come in £50 here in the UK, lower than previous versions of the Ryzen 5. And that's obviously good news. Ryzen 9000 uses the same socket AM5 as Ryzen 7000, and that means the hardware is pretty much a known quantity. And the final pro is that DDR5 memory is really cheap at the moment, and if you pick a B650 motherboard rather than an expensive X670E, you can get a really good deal. Cons, the negative points. We know full well that AMD is going to bring out 3D versions of these processors. They'll probably be a Ryzen 7, I expect it at the end of September. So wait to see about that processor before you make a buying decision. And also, 800 series motherboards will be coming at the same point, we expect, i.e. the end of next month. Again, you might be tempted by an 800 series motherboard, or you might suddenly find 600 series get a bit cheaper. And that would be good. In conclusion, the Ryzen 5 9600X is an impressive piece of hardware. The thing is, are you in the market for a 6-core processor? It's a good 6-core processor. I would personally run it on auto at low power. It does a fine job. If I was buying a new budget PC, I would certainly consider this processor. But if you're buying a gaming PC, surely you want to push the envelope that bit further, in which case perhaps Ryzen 5 doesn't quite offer enough grunt for you. We've got a series of reviews coming for Zen 5 processors over the coming days and weeks, so make sure you watch all our videos before you make a buying decision. Also, it's kitguru.net on the web, and we're on TikTok.